Since um, TED is about dreaming the future, we'd like to present to you a project that we've been working on and it's work in progress. It's our dream for the future. We're, we'll be talking about serious reading and what it means today. Let me start by telling the story of Isumbuk. Isumbuk is a project that we've been working on for a couple of years and it involves many researchers. Now how the idea came about I teach literature to engineering students. And as you know, they're busy people, right? They don't have time to read the uh, uh, short stories that I put on their reading lists. And therefore, I decide to come into class with the handouts with the highlighted quotes to make their job easier. Now, they were thrilled when I said we will be uh, quote hopping. They were relieved. You know, the last thing they wanted was to read 20 pages of challenging literature in a foreign language. But I actually wanted more than just the quotes. I don't mind this sort of x-ray approach to literature, but I wanted to demonstrate that the bits in between the quotes are like the flesh around the skeleton. And therefore, this is like a Mary Poppins technique. Do you know the song? A spoonful of sugar makes the medicine go down. And I thought the quotes would be a little bit like the spoonful of sugar, um, enjoyable bits, and, and our passion for literature would also help the medicine go down, and maybe the students could cover the full short stories and books. The students responded quite well to this methodology. They gradually got their teeth into the story and read not only the quotes, but the bits in between and enjoyed the full text. And Basically, this um, enabled them to have what I call eureka moments. Moments, um, I don't know whether you feel that way too about literature. Uh, there are moments where I read a passage or a paragraph or maybe a sentence, and suddenly I feel like the writer has managed to encapsulate something that I've known or felt for a long time. And However, I would not be able to express it that way. It's like the author is presenting it to me with gift wrappings, and I feel grateful. That's what I wanted the students to experience. And I also thought, if we had this in electronic format, uh, this short story with the quotes highlighted, we could probably um, zoom in and out uh, more easily. We could also get the students on board and get them to participate in this collaborative process of selecting the quotes. So we started building a platform. We called it Book, And then we realized it wasn't just about building a platform. We had to fine tune the pedagogy and look into it. Uh, we also had to organize the resources on the platform. We have all the books in the public domain. I would love to have more books, copyrighted books. We would need to get publishers on board. I mean, wouldn't it be nice if I could have my favorite Margaret Atwood books on the platform? That's my ultimate dream. Anyway, so there's still a lot to be done, and that's how Chris and I got together to work mainly on the pedagogy. You want to take it from there? Thanks, Chris. When we decided to focus our talk on serious reading in the digital age, we didn't realize that the concept of seriousness as applied to reading still needed to be defined. The words serious and reading just do not seem to go together. The internet search for serious plus reading was of little help for once, uh, Wikipedia showed no direct matches. A Google search with serious plus reading did come up with a direct match. Uh, here it is right here. It's a site for a reading lamp. Uh, this is important as an aid to read at night or in the dark, but a reading lamp was not what we had in mind for our talk on serious reading. What we did have in mind was to look at reading from the perspective of the new technologies as used by Generation Z and see whether the concept of seriousness can or should be applied to reading. The technology revolution of the past 20 years has introduced dimensions absent from traditional books that necessarily change the reading experience. E-readers, enhanced books, touch screens, scrolling, hypertext. Our belief is that the new technologies are here to stay. However, our fear as pedagogues is that the unexpected consequence of the ease of use of the new technologies may induce zapping into reading. That is, skimming and scanning will become the end 
rather than the means. And that's where Isumbuk comes in. Much like the sugar in the Mary Poppins example as an incentive for taking one's medicine, technology is the incentive to encourage Generation Z readers to become serious readers of difficult texts. But before we continue, it's probably a good idea to give you our definition of the serious reader. Serious readers are willing to invest intellectually and creatively in a work in order to be changed and learn something, learn something about themselves, about the world, and about their place in the world. We want Generation Z readers to develop multiple ways to approach reading. Reading fast and furious, taking shortcuts, zigzagging, zapping, or reading slow and serious, to go deep into the heart of the text and take out what is essential. Now, let's get serious about reading and see how the Izum book methodology can result in the second type of reading, slow and serious reading. The Izum book platform, as Chris has mentioned, has two levels of participation. The first level is that of the reader who is to a certain extent a consumer of a product, a consumer of an Izum book. The second level is that of the contributor, and here it is, the producer of an Izum book. Here I will focus primarily on the contributor-producer level in that it is at this active level that we can attempt to apply our definition of serious reading. The methodology for creating an Izum book is simple, and Chris has explained the process, which involves selecting quotes and connecting them with comments into a coherent text. On the slide, we see an example from Anna Karenina, and we can see that the quotes are indicated by quotation marks, connected by comments. All the quotes, and you can see the one in blue there where the cursor is positioned, have hyperlinks. And the reader can zoom in or zoom out of the text by clicking on a quote for various levels of abridgment. Izum book. A good analogy for an Izum book is that of a puzzle. Okay? Producing an Izum book is like taking apart a giant puzzle to select a smaller number of pieces and then making these pieces fit into a coherent picture. Okay? Chris was able to do this for her students instinctively. The platform we have created, however, takes away the teacher and instead empowers readers to do the selecting and collating. Empowerment implies putting oneself in the place of the author. It presupposes understanding the meaning of the text and it requires a careful and close reading of the text. But by searching for this meaning in the text, the reader develops intuitively and inductively certain skills of reading and a certain facility for zeroing in on what is essential. This inductive approach is further strengthened by the possibility for collaboration. Collaboration with peers, collaboration with tutors, who can comment on, this on the choices made, propose their own, and come to a shared understanding of the text. There are no teachers to give an answer on what should be the best choice for the quotations. I indeed, there is no best choice. There is only the best choice for the reader. Now, there are three rules for making these choices. The rules are practice, practice, practice. One becomes a serious reader by reading seriously. Okay? And reading seriously is hard work at first. It requires a close, analytical, and linear reading of the text, especially for the choice of pertinent quotations. It requires the reader to exercise skills that are different from the skimming and scanning skills that are used when reading an email or an article from the press. It requires the reader to take on responsibility for creating a meaningful, abridged version of the text that reflects the original since the requirement for, produ for producing an Izum book is that the result must stick together, and that is, be cohesive, and must make sense, be coherent. It requires the reader to put himself in the shoes of the author. 
Okay. The Isum book methodology is innovative in that the Isum book is not a summary of the original. Rather, the creator of an Isum book must retell a story, choosing key quotes and linking them into a narrative that can stand by itself is not a natural thing to do. That is why the definition of a serious reader includes a requirement for both an intellectual and a creative investment. By making such an investment, it is hoped that the reader will find meaning, not surface level meaning, but meaning at a deeper level of the text. But the chances are good that the effort made by seeking deep meaning will benefit the reader and help him learn more about himself and about the world. Something will happen. <coughs> Changing oneself for the better through reading sounds like an ambitious, idealistic, and perhaps unrealistic goal, but it must be remembered that the Izum book methodology, unlike the top-down classroom setting, is bottom-up and reader-centered. It is the reader and the reader alone who can decide whether to accept or reject the message. But the important thing is, the reader has a choice. Now let me come back to the Anna Karenina example that Chris mentioned earlier on. Now this is um, a book that we studied in class, and again it's very challenging for um, French people to read a book in English which is over 800 pages. This is the document that they used to uh, create their Inizum book. They would first go to the full book in electronic format. They would read it and select quotes that would automatically be inserted in each one of those sections preceded with the quotation marks. And they would add, whenever necessary, uh, a line of uh, summary to link the quotes. And I say whenever necessary, it's not always necessary. So you can do this exercise for any book. It's a collaborative process. You can share the chapters. Um, you can do it in any language. This is another example, Le Comte de Monte Cristo, uh, a French novel, which is on the reading list of six graders in France. And our hope in devising this tool is that the students would be able to share their eureka moments and learn to read above their levels. Now, a lot remains to be done because we still need to fine-tune the pedagogy. We need to adapt it to various um, profiles of uh, students. We also need to get the organizational element um, uh, undergoing because, like I think you uh, know about the TED Talk, the Sugata uh, Mitra TED Talk, um, we drew inspiration from that in the sense that uh, Sagata Mitra managed to connect grannies in England with um, uh, children in remote areas in India who did not have access to education. And we think, again, this could be a self-sustaining organism in the sense that um, expert readers could help out younger readers. Now, the, the objective is to carry on um, um, fine-tuning uh, our tool in order to encourage students to become more autonomous, competent, and related. It's also to give them access to our literary heritage. Now, when talking about technology, we often use the word um, uh, enriched in connection to reading with new technological means. Now, the question we ask ourselves today is, does reading need to be enriched or rediscovered? Is it becoming endangered? like a threatened species? Is there anything that we can do about it? Can we um, establish some sort of connection with the digital age? Because the only way is forward, as Chris said. There's no going back. There's no saying, in our days, people read better. And that certainly is not our purpose with Isum Book. Therefore, we would like to connect um, Daniel um, Pennock's Bill of Rights to our manifesto of duties and obligations for the serious reader. Now, uh, you're probably familiar with Penex Bill of Rights, the right to not read, to skip pages, to not finish, to reread, to read anything, the right to escapism, the right to read anywhere, the right to browse, the right to read out loud, and to not defend your tastes. Now, we feel that our um, uh, manifesto 
somewhat completes that because we too believe in the freedom of the reader. However, we also believe in stimulating the reader in order for him to experience something unique. Therefore, our manifesto is the following. We want the reader to explore different genres. Think of a book as a compass. To suspend um, disbelief. Plunge in, let go, and enjoy the magic of storytelling. To compare books and authors. You can't judge a book by its cover but you can judge a book by the company it keeps. To experiment different levels of reading. Read high, read low, read widely. To allow yourself to develop a passion for this or that particular author. When you feel strongly about an author, commit yourself to reading every word written. Read and reread. A book is reinvented with every reading because in the meantime, you have changed. And then reread and re-reread. <laughs> Rereading is the key to discovering the secrets of the writer's craft through a process of reverse engineering. Experience flow in reading. Lose yourself and your ego in the act of reading in order to experience a suspension of time. Embrace paradox. Including the ones in this list of recommendations. Think of reading as a way of developing listening skills. Reading a book is engaging in the give and take of a conversation with the author. Hang in there until it feels like a voice. This is a quote by Shakespeare, by the way. The silent page will speak to you. Make the effort to read above your level. Uh, readers much like athletes must train to keep in shape. Allow yourself to be infected and infect others. Unfortunately, there is no cure for such an infection. <laughs> to alleviate symptoms, read a good book. And we hope that the, our, our platform will encourage the 12 points. And it's um, a way of saying that our platform is the embodiment of Mary Poppins um, technique. To come back to the infection element, let me just add that the better the story the stronger the infection. And so the infectious story gets passed on. It goes viral. And who better than Generation Z understands the importance of going viral? Therefore, our wish for today is for tomorrow's serious readers to help serious reading go viral. Thank you. Thank you.